Hello and welcome to another video. In the last two videos I had talked about how to map trees and I will continue with that showing one of the examples of how you can use the data collected in OpenStreetMap. First of all, a huge big thank you to all my followers and subscribers. It means a lot and it keeps me motivated to do more videos. And you'll find my Facebook page on OSM for History Buffs and you can just subscribe to the channel right here. And now let's get started. So this is where we are going to go, a U-map with all the trees mapped and their species in genus. I'm back in Roth House where I started with the first video and if I just click on any of the trees, like here the hollow oaks, I put the genus colon en as a heading and then further down I have the species, the English species and the Latin species and then I have left some room for variety, it doesn't make any sense for oak but uh, it does for apple. So we have the lot of the boin here. So you have apple as the genus and then the Latin species is Malus domestica and genus would just be Malus. And the variety is blood of the boin. And for the back here, we have another variety, carry pippin and so on. And they don't all have the same amount of information in them, but they all have an English genus and at least one other piece of information. And how do we get that information into our UMAP? We start an overpass turbo and we just I'll just show you how many trees are mapped in Kilkenny. And we use the natural equals tree tag, natural equals tree in Kilkenny just to show you that there are way more trees than I've uh, added the species and genus to. So these are all the trees that people have added to OpenStreetMap for Kilkenny and that's 1681. Obviously I didn't go around and add all the species and genus to them because I don't have the time. But um, there is no point putting all these on the map because if you're there, you'll see it's a tree. What you want to know is what kind of a tree it is. So we'll just forget about the natural equal tree and go over to this query here. Zoom in on Kilkenny. And what I've done here is I'm looking for nodes and ways, not relations because trees are not in a relation, not in open street map terms. And the ways are just for hedges. There are a couple of hedges that I have mapped and nodes are just for single trees. So I'm looking for anything that has a species tag. So that's the Latin species. Um, anything that has a species en. Anything that has a genus tag and anything with a genus colon en tag. And that will show me all the trees and also hedges. And on the rare occasion that there's a forest where the species and genus are mapped, it will show me that too, but I don't think there are any forests in Kilkenny. So I'll run this query now. And that's the ones where I have added species and genus tags to, and that's 455. So it's a third, roughly, of all of them. But um, if I zoom in on Roth House Garden, and I'll click on one of the Hollum Oaks, you'll see all the tags that it has. So, uh, and again, it's in alphabetical order. Genus colon en is oak. I should have spelled it with the capital O. Um, and then I had added a, an estimated height, leaf cycle evergreen, because that's what Alma oaks are. Natural equals tree species is Quarkus ilex, Quarkus ilex. That's the Latin name for it. And the English version is Hollum oak. And then I also added the species Wikidata identifier and I had said that wrong in the first video. You don't use the Wikidata because that's just for one singular tree, but you use species colon Wikidata. And if you have the genus, you use genus Wikidata. You can also use both. Let's look here with the mulberry. So um, similar, I also added the German and the Irish genus, which you don't have to do, but you can. You can add as many languages as you want. And over here, the um, Morello cherry, I have the genus, the genus colon en, the height, natural tree, the species, which is apparently Prunus cer cerosus, 
Ja? And it translates into sour cherry. So Morello cherries are apparently a subgroup of sour cherries. And then I added the species wiki data and the variety. Um, I think it's also cultivar, but maybe that's a different um, systematic subgroup. I am not a bot botanist, but um, variety is one of them. And that shows you all the trees that have the genus and or the species. And you see here there are four more trees and they're not highlighted with this blue line. And that's because they're just tagged as natural tree and they haven't had their species or our genus added. So first of all, we have to create a blank map and we go to umap.openstreetmap.fr. And you can sign in with your OpenStreetMap account, but you don't have to. You can just click create a map. But I will sign in so I have my map saved in my account. And when you click on log in, sign in, it opens up this window on the right and you can choose your provider, GitHub, Bitbucket, Twitter or OpenStreetMap. And that opens a new tab. And in the new tab, if you're already logged in on OpenStreetMap, it will just ask you to give it, to grant access. But if you're not, you, you're going to have your login screen with your username and your password. But I was already logged in, so I just grant access. And once you've logged in, it will redirect you to the UMAP page and you see that you're logged in and you can look at your the maps you've created already under My Maps. But we don't want to do that, so we want to create a map and you do that in the top right corner or just down here. So I click at the top right corner and that will open the blank map and we can zoom in on the area where we want to create our map. In my case, that's Kilkenny for you, it will be just somewhere else. And we can give our map a name by clicking at the top left corner, the little pencil, and let us call it trees in Kilkenny. You can call it whatever you want to, and then add a description, genus and species of trees or something. And then um, I can tell you already that the background map is not very well suited for a project because there's too much going on. Um, so I will choose a different one and you do that on the right uh, menu. There's a layer menu and you click on that. And I would recommend the black and white one, but you can just try out whatever you think is best. You can also use the dark one. But this only gives you the outline of buildings, street names and rivers and so on, but it doesn't um, specify what, what types of roads and so on. Um, so I think that's a better choice. But you can go and save that already, even though it's just an empty map. And that will also um, set the zoom level and the center of your map. And now we will go back to our overpass query here with all the trees that have the genus and species. And you go to export. And that opens this window here. And then you can click on copy as GeoJSON. And it gives you the message GeoJSON was successfully copied to the clipboard. And you can dismiss that. Go back to UMAP. And then you upload that data that you have in your clipboard uh, by clicking on the upload button, which is the um, arrow up. And you paste it into, or it says paste your data here. Just control V or just right click and paste. And it looks all very mysterious, but you don't have to worry about that. And underneath you choose the data format, which is GeoJSON, because that's what we've just exported and then it goes into layer one. And if you do it for the first time, you don't have to worry about anything else and you just click import. And these are all the spots we saw earlier. Now this is not very pretty. So we're just gonna save this first. And then we're gonna change what these dots look like. And we do that by going on to this um, symbol here, the layer symbol. The other one is actually a tile layer symbol. So the other one, this is the layer symbol and we only have the one layer. And we click on the little pencil there and 
and you can give the layer a name like trees or something. And then you go to shape properties and you choose, since trees are green, I'm going to choose green, um, like this one. And this just changes it to forest green. And then we're going to change the icon shape because I think that's not very pretty. And you have the choice between this one, a circle, a drop, or a ball. And that's completely up to you what you want to choose. I'll choose the circle. And you can save that then. And if we zoom in onto Rothaus Garden again, and we click on one of the Hollem Oaks, oh, sorry. It's not finished saving yet. You have to disable editing just left of the save button. Anyway, click on the Quarkus Ilex and anywhere you click now, it'll just give you the name of the layer. That is not useful. So we want to tell it what to put in this little pop-up there. So you go into the editing mode by clicking on the pencil and back into the layer mode and click on the pencil there to edit the layer. And you see there's the layer properties and further down you see interaction options and that's what we want. Click on that. And under pop-up content template, click define. And you see that it's trying to show the name and the description. And the trees don't have a name or a description because that is not one of the tags that is used, hopefully. So there is neither name nor description there, so it can display that. Instead, I have to go back into the editing mode. We want to show the genus en as a heading, and the heading is defined by using the hashtag there. So one hash for the main heading. A simple star for italic and it has to be in the front of your text or your placeholder and the, the end and a double star for bold and so on. Just gonna close this again. So I want the English name Janice in as the heading and then I want the Latin one underneath and that's just Janice and we'll put that as a as a second heading and italics and we'll just check if it works. So the double hash is for the second head heading and the, the two stars are for the italics and the wavy um, brackets are the symbol for the placeholder. So it just extracts what is saved under genus en and genus and puts it automatically into our little pop-up. If you've never done something like that before, that must seem like magic. And it kind of is, but um, it's really simple. So I just save that and disable editing if it lets me. Disable editing. And if I click on one of the Holm Oaks now, it just shows Oak because I guess I hadn't saved the um, Latin genus. If I click on a different one, there with the with some of the apple trees I had saved the genus, so I wasn't very systematic in in what I put in. So you see, it has the, the cherry, that's the English genus as the heading, and then the Latin one as a second heading is a bit smaller, and it's also in italics. And we're just gonna add more like that. So we then we um, use the species. So species en first, and underneath in italics again, which is not very nice for people with dyslexia. Well, I guess I could just have the English one bold and the Latin one just in regular fonts. And then as the last one, I'll put variety and use the placeholder for variety. And I'll save that and see if that works. 
disable editing again. And when I click on the Harlem Oaks now, it shows the English genus, the English species, and the Latin one, and there's nothing under variety. But you see that it will show the word variety because I used it as a just so people know what, what this is about. Um, and the other ones I only used the placeholder, so if there's no data in the database, it'll just show a blank line. So you have to think about how you do that. You could also put English species or species in brackets English there, but then you will always have that. Um, and I think it's neater to have it like this without the uh, something before the colon. Um, and it would be even neater if you could program it in a way that it only shows the thing before the colon if there is something, but you can't do that in UMAP. You could probably do it in Mapbox, but I just don't have the time to create a map in Mapbox at the moment. Very sorry about that. If I ever have the time, I might do that as a new project. So that's the Hollem Oak. If I click on one of the trees where it, I know I have the variety like here. Oops. Maybe I didn't. I must have done something wrong there. Um, ah, it's variety en, of course, yeah. So, because I didn't put in the Latin name for the variety, because there, I think there usually isn't one. So it should work now. And when I click on the apples, yeah, so we have the English apple and then the species in uh, Latin, Malus domestica, which just means house apple. Or domesticated apple and then the variety is blood of the boin for these three i can tell you that off by heart and then there's um carrie pippin here and i think ladyfinger are the ones in the back and here we have the morello cherry i filled that in very neatly so we have the genus en genus species en species and then the variety and this is just um what we have extracted from OpenStreetMap. You can add information to every single tree now as well. But before that, I'm just going to want to show you this shape. You might have noticed that. That's one of our um, flower beds. It's a herb garden. And I, obviously, they're too small and they sometimes they grow where we didn't put them. So um, I just marked this as a flower bed and then added all the different um, species that are growing there under genus it seems genus en so rosemary ladies bed straw oregano lavender there's way more it was just to show that you can do that as well um if i want to add information to just this tree for example it's a mulberry tree i have to go back into editing mode and i click on the tree itself and on the little pencil there and you see there's all the different things that could have been filled in and you can go and um, update it there, but it would be better for everyone, um, more sustainable if you've added it to OpenStreetMap. But if you had some information, let's say you have a tree in your garden that was donated by a certain person, you could add that information here now. So you, if you just want to use a description, let's say mulberry tree, uh, fun facts about uh, mulberry trees, um, mulberries are used as Sweeteners for diabetic people in Turkey. That's what a tourist told me once. And that's what I usually tell people on the tour when we talk about the mulberry trees. So you just save that then. And you can use that for information that you can't, can't put into OpenStreetMap because it's personal or it's not relevant for OpenStreetMap. And when I click on it now, it should, oh yeah, of course it doesn't show it because I haven't told it to show it to us. Silly me. So we have to go back into the layer mode and into the interaction options. And then under variety, I could add a placeholder for description and save that again. And now we have the description underneath there. And you can add more and you can also add an image. So if you want, um, for some reason, an image of your tree, um, you can do that by 
going back into the interaction options and if you click on the little question mark there it'll explain to you how to add an image into that box there so you have to have it uploaded somewhere already you could just use um from wiki commons let's go back to the theme about the donors let's say you have a park or something where you have a lot of trees donated by people and you want to give credit to them and have them on your map what you can do you can go you go into the editing mode and to the layer thing but this time you don't click on the little pencil but on the table to edit the properties of the table and there you can add a new property and you call that donor okay and that should create a new column here and it's all alphabetical so under donor and then it's already saved and when you now click on the um, the, the tree and the little um, pencil there is a new field here for donor and you can put that in there this tree I think wasn't donated and I'm not going to put it in because I don't want to give wrong information but I know that the hollow oaks were all donated and probably some of the apple trees I hope we have the information somewhere still um, and you can add that then and save and the whole shebang disable editing and then it will be shown there and you can put um no it won't be shown because you have to add that to your window first you so you can have description there and then underneath you can have donor colon and then you use the wavy brackets and type in donor and then save disable editing and um, then they should be shown in the pop-ups. I haven't put anything in now, so it's not much effect in showing you. So you have donor here and then the name would show. You can close that. Now you have that in your browser. You're not carrying your computer around um, to look at trees, obviously. So what you want to do is get a shareable link that you can share on Facebook and people can open it on their phone or you just can open it on your phone. And we will see if that works because it usually doesn't. On the left side, you have a menu and there is the familiar sharing button. And sometimes it shows a field here where you get a short link. And I've had that in videos before. I don't know why it, what I have to do to make it show that. Sometimes I just try it three times and then it works. So on the side you have all these control buttons. You can zoom in and out, which on your phone you can just do by pinching the screen and so on. You know that. And then you have all these controls here that you can disable so people can't mess too much with it. The, um, there is an edit button here, so people could add, could go into the ID editor or JAWS and they have to have an account, of course, and edit the map, the open street map, not your U map. Um, but you can disable these over here and the map settings and it's that um, little symbol there, the user interface options. So display the zoom control. That's the plus and minus. We want that. Yes, the search control. Maybe you don't want that. So you click never. Display the full screen control. I don't think that's useful. It might be up to you. Use display the embed control. Yes. Display the locate control. And that uh, gives you this little thing that you can click on your phone and it might show you where you are in relation on the map. It doesn't on my phone, but I might just have it disabled on my phone. And then measure control, we don't really need that. And the tile layers control, people can change the background um, layer on it, up to you. I don't want it. And display the control to open OpenStreetMap editor. Uh, that will be hidden. So when, when it's like this, you won't see it. You have to click on that arrow to open that up. And the layers control don't need that either because I only have one layer and then you can save that 
I will just refresh the page to see if that helps with the sharing thing. Yeah, so that worked for some reason. So I guess that's the tip. Just refresh your page using Control F5. And when you click on the share button on the left, the share control, it will show the short URL. And that's always the pattern is HTTP colon uh, double slash u dot osmfr dot org slash m for mobile slash and then the number of your map, which is also displayed at the top there. So you could just create the short um, code if for some reason it doesn't work by following that pattern. And um, I think that's it. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please like and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And there's also the Facebook page, OSM for History Buffs, which you can follow and be updated on a more regular basis. And if you make a map like this, please leave a link to it in the comment section below or on the Facebook page. See you in the next video. Slan!